I am, I am Bioflora. It's my company. I, um, my business is to provide services to plant breeders around the world, mostly. Um, I work with uh, breeders from Germany and Japan and the United States of America. I don't have uh, very many Canadian breeders. It's not um, because my, most of my business is in flowers. And in Canada, we don't breed for flowers. Um, I, most of my job is administration. I file applications for plant breeders' rights. And um, I also do greenhouse trials. So most of my business is paperwork. And in the summertime, I grow flowers in my greenhouse. I have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't forget oh. part of it. <laughs> OK. Este, eh, la maestra en ciencias, Brenda Cole, eh, trabajó durante 15 años en el gobierno de Estados Unidos, eh, precisamente en la parte de este, derechos para los eh, mejoradores de plantas y después de eso ella estableció su propia compañía privada, que el nombre es Bioflora para nosotros, o Bioflora por ellos. Eh, ella se dedica fundamentalmente a eh, eh, llenar eh, aplicaciones de gente que quiere registrar sus nuevas variedades, ella hace todo el, pa el papeleo entre el gobierno de Canadá, eh, también para poder otorgar estas aplicaciones tiene que conducir ensayos en sus invernaderos, y trabaja fundamentalmente con flores, por eso estaba diciendo que interactúa mucho con mejoradores de Europa, porque en Canadá eh, por las condiciones de clima no hay mucho mejoramiento de este, ornamentales. Gracias. It's my, it's my small boy. So, so you understand my job, um, I have a just my honors degree and my master's from the University of Guelph. I was a teacher in Africa for many years, but mostly the reason I have my job is I worked for the Canadian government for many years to learn the legal part of my job. Then I quit the government. That was maybe not such a good idea. <laughs> I quit my government job and I started doing biotech, and then I started my business doing plant breeders' rights work. Okay, entonces, eh, ahí en la transparencia ustedes pueden ver un poquito más sobre su este, historial académico. Ella tiene una licenciatura en biología, que la cual obtuvo de la Universidad de Carleton en, en Canadá, con honores. Hizo su maestría en eh, agricultura en la Universidad de Guelph, en Canadá también. Eh, tuvo experiencias eh, este, enseñando en Zimbabue, en África, por tres años. Eh, después de, eh, como les decía anteriormente, ella trabajó para el gobierno canadiense por 10 años en el área de derechos para eh, mejoradores, después decidió renunciar a su, a su trabajo en el gobierno y hacer su propia compañía, al, de, al principio no estaba muy segura de que tomó una decisión correcta, y, y este, pero ahora pues eh, trabajó un año en el sector de biotecnología y durante 18 años eh, este, sacado adelante su propia empresa privada. Gracias. My business in plant breeders' rights is an area called intellectual property. It's uh, more of a legal job than a science job. The idea of intellectual property, it gives you a legal right to inventions and creations in uh, various areas, of course. My business in PBR, which is, um, what is it, professional bull fighting? What is it? What is that? PBR. Um, professional bull fighting. No. <laughs> Plant breeders' rights is uh, a type of intellectual property for, for flowers. And if you think about intellectual property, you can see. No, but she, I think she's talking about I was, the PBR. I was making a joke. PBR, professional bull something. <laughs> That's a very Canadian I saw joke. a sign. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we can just go. Bueno, su área fundamental es este, la, la propiedad intelectual. Cuando los mejoradores dedican mucho tiempo a obtener sus nuevas variedades, 
eh, tienen el derecho a aplicar para tener la propiedad intelectual sobre ellas. Eso significa que si nosotros la queremos utilizar, debemos de pagar derechos a la persona que lo, que lo obtuvo. The great thing about my job is that I get to do two things. I have both legal work and I also get to work with plants. It's perfect. So I get to use my brain for the legal part and I get to love life and live in a greenhouse in the summer. So for being able to do my job, I have to understand the domestic laws and regulations in Canada for plant breeders' rights to serve my clients. As well, I have to understand the international framework for intellectual property for plants. Of course, that is because I have many clients and I have to give them advice on how to do their applications in Canada. As well, um, as you might understand, many I am not a lawyer, but in Canada, many lawyers do my job. But I have an advantage because I am also a botanist. I have an excellent knowledge of botany, I understand taxonomy, I can grow plants, I am a grower, and um, when I work with my clients, I understand them. Whereas a lawyer, they have to uh, struggle. <laughs> Bueno, lo que dice que le, lo que le encanta de su trabajo es que tiene fundamentalmente dos partes, la parte legal y la parte de producción de plantas, entonces lo, realmente lo disfruta bastante. Entonces su trabajo fundamental es conocer la legislación sobre la protección intelectual en Canadá y en otros países y asesorar a los mejoradores de otros países cómo llenar las aplicaciones eh, en, en Canadá para poder comercializar sus o registrar y comercializar sus variedades. Uh, y el hecho de que ella sea una bióloga este, le da ventajas porque conoce sobre taxonomía, sobre morfología, que eh, vamos a ver a lo largo de su presentación que eh, es necesario hacer una descripción varietal, es, estableciendo perfectamente las características morfológicas de las plantas, para a veces van a ver ustedes también, las diferencias son muy pequeñas para poder registrar una nueva variedad, entonces, una de las condiciones es que hay que demostrar que hay un, al menos una diferencia. Entonces, las diferencias a veces son muy sutiles, entonces es muy útil para ella haberse formado en biología. Gracias. Um, so, a little bit of legal before we go into the greenhouse. Um, an important organization in my business is an international organization called UPOV. The beauty of UPOV, they are in um, Geneva, Switzerland. The beauty of UPOV is they create harmonized legislation worldwide. I understand the Canadian rules, the Canadian legislation, but I also kind of understand the Mexican rules because they are all harmonized through UPOV rules. Um, I'm going to just leave that. Creo que la mayoría estamos familiarizados con UPOP, es la Organización Internacional este, para la Protección de Variedades eh, Vegetales. Eh, ellos se encargan de establecer una legislación eh, global y por eso dice que ella puede en entender que las, las reglas en México deben eh, ajustarse a esta legislación internacional. A little bit more legal. Um, To understand the different rules in the country and around the world, there are two main types of legislation under UPOV where we can know what the basic rules are. So I know that Mexico is still stuck in 78, which is the year the legislation was developed or the uh, protocols were made in UPOV. So there's lots of rules. I'm only presenting three on the screen. The most important idea for a plant that is going into PBR is, is it eligible? Can it pass the rules and, and anyway. So if a plant is going to be allowed in a country for plant breeders rights, we have rules on prior sales and under 78 in, in your country, there can be no sales. And that's the biggest difference really. Whereas when you go to 91, which is the, um, the convention for Canada, we are allowed to sell a plant in Canada for one year and still be able to file an application. These things are important because when you're trying to 
introduce a variety around the world, you always want to sell it. And so if you sell your variety, then you lose your chance to have intellectual property on that variety. So these rules are very difficult to meet. And so under the 91 Convention for Mexico, it will make it easier for um, plant breeders to bring their varieties to Mexico. Well, uh, como pueden ver en la transparencia, de, eh, hay dos tipos de, de reglamentos en la UPOP y el más actual es el de 91, nosotros en México todavía seguimos el de 78. Eh, para poder registrar una variedad, se, ahí pueden ver ustedes, se establece el número de años que tiene que estar producido en Canadá para poder derecho a aplicar por la propiedad intelectual. En México este, nosotros no tenemos que este, producirla comercialmente antes de registrarla. Esa es una de las principales este, diferencias. More rules. I won't uh, talk much, but again, I'm only showing you the UPOV convention has many rules and different countries. The 78 convention, which is Mexico, is different from the 91 convention. These are just things that, as a plant breeder, you have the right to do under the legislation. Um, these are mostly for seed varieties. So under the 91, you have the um, protection on your new varieties for all of those items producing and I'm not I won't go through them all there's too many but the idea is under the new legislation you have more rights stronger protection in your country so always um, the breeders they want stronger protection you don't have to go through it no okay well eh, estas reglas que está presentando son para fundamentalmente para los cultivos que producen grano, entonces eh, lo que ella dice que la nueva legislación da mucha mayor protección a los eh, mejoradores que la que seguimos nosotros del 78. So, um, why as a plant breeder do you want to have plant breeders rights? It's the idea that as a plant breeder you spend a lot of time and money and resources, so of course as a plant breeder you want to be sure that someone cannot steal your plant and plagiarize it. It may sound surprising, but as a plant breeder, if you go to someone's greenhouse and you see a plant you like, you just take a small clip and then you have the plant and it's easy to copycat that variety. So um, let's keep going. So again, um, the idea for a breeder is they just want to be sure they can keep other people from taking their plant material and not paying any Royalties. Oh, toma mucho tiempo obtener una nueva variedad, por lo tanto es conveniente proteger los derechos de quien lo hizo, porque hay riesgo de, decía ella, de que alguien llegue, tome un pedacito de nuestra variedad, la propague y luego empiece a, a obtener beneficios económicos de ella, lo cual no es, no es muy justo. So again, another slide on helping plant breeders. So the idea of the legislation is to protect plant breeders. The plant breeder is called the holder. He's the holder of the right, and it's the idea that the holder will get some fair remuneration, which is royalties, for um, the use of their variety. So these are just the different items that the plant breeder has control over. They can control who can license their varieties. So they, many companies, they want to maybe keep um, control of who can grow their plant so that and that way they can dictate how the market uses their plants. So they can control the production and make sure that they can track where their plant material is, as well, most importantly, collecting royalties and making sure there's an investment in their future plant breeding programs. Cuando se tiene el certificado de obtentor, ustedes eh, tienen la propiedad intelectual de la variedad, tienen eh, por lo mismo quien la produzca le tiene, les tiene que pagar regalías y como obtentor ustedes tienen la oportunidad de elegir eh, en qué, a qué compañía le pueden este, dar la variedad para que la produzca. Entonces, a partir de las regalías ustedes este, pueden recuperar la inversión que hicieron para la obtención de la variedad. Just a few things to remember, why is plant breeding important? I mean, these folks who are breeding are very creative and they are working in both all crops and these are just some of the traits that make plant breeding 
important, such as yield and resistance to disease. If you're breeding for fruit, your fruit size, fruit quality, and horticultural crops, it's different. It's usually just how the flower looks, its habit, whether you have a nice variegation on your leaves, these are all the various um, important aspects of what plant breeders are trying to do. Entonces, para los cultivos agronómicos, de los criterios que utilizan los mejoradores, pues fundamentalmente es rendimiento, resistencia a plagas y enfermedades, eh, sabor, tamaño. En el caso de, los, de las hort eh, hortalizas o las plantas ornamentales, eh, el mejoramiento tiene que ver también con cuestiones de eh, eh, hábito de crecimiento, este, variegación en las hojas, este, colores de flor, etc. More plant breeding. Again, I'm not a plant breeder, but I'm sure somebody here is. So again, plant breeders are spending a lot of time um, working on the composition of the genes and trying to create new diversity by combining different varieties and lines and accessions. I think um, these are just uh, some pictures. You, I'm not going okay. to. Dice que ella no es mejoradora, pero entiende que el trabajo de los mejoradores es combinar, hacer diferentes combinaciones de genes para generar nuevas variedades mejoradas. I'm not going to even spend time on this slide. I wanted to confuse you with this picture. It's, but it's the idea that the breeders are on the top, eh? and then the, all the good stuff flows down to the consumer. And when you think of domestic and foreign, there's lots of crossover. But I love this crazy slide. <laughs> it doesn't make well, sense. Dice que nos quería confundir con esta transparencia, pero que el, el objetivo es demostrar que los mejoradores son los quienes tienen que estar al mando de todo este proceso. So uh, back to the beginning, um, my job is to work with plant breeders and the legislation covers both uh, asexual and sexual reproduction. Um, my business mostly is in the area of asexual. I work with plant breeders who um, create varieties that are vegetatively propagated through plant cuttings. I also do seed reproduced trials for soybeans. Why not? Entonces, la protección de plantas abarca tanto la reproducción asexual como la sexual. Ella fundamentalmente trabaja con especies que se reproducen asexualmente, pero también conduce este, experimentos en, de incremento de semillas de soya. So, a little bit on my clients. My clients are concerned about their plant varieties and who is asexually reproducing them. And what you'll see now is how easy it is to reproduce an asexual variety. Obviamente, los, sus eh, clientes que producen ornamentales este, están preocupados porque estas se pueden reproducir de forma ilegal muy fácilmente. So you can see, these are the unrooted cuttings, um, I think, Maybe you don't know, or maybe you know, but many of the unrooted cuttings that are propagated in North America, they come from Mexico, Costa Rica, Guatemala. These countries are the countries that host all of the mother plants and all the genetic materials, and then they're shipped in, shipped in baggies to Canada. Mm -hmm. And then you can see um, these are trays of 107s that are used for, uh, those are the trays that I would buy when they're finished. Entonces dice que la México, Costa Rica son productores de este, cortes de plantas sin raíz, entonces parte de su trabajo inicia eh, haciendo que estos eh, trozos o cortes eh, generen raíces. So again, just to show you, this is my friend's greenhouse that I buy my plant material from up in Niagara Falls. Um, you can see the line once the cuttings are stuck they go through the conveyor into the greenhouse. It's just a nice, it's cool. Entonces, como pueden ver, ella este, tiene un, eh, bueno, le compra a esta compañía que es de, de las, está cerca de un pueblo de, la, de las cataratas de Niágara, entonces lo que ustedes aprecian ahí es que tiene una, una manga donde se van a rehumedecer los cortes. 
and then you can see this is a very this is one acres of uh, many acres of greenhouse space you can see how um, the boom goes over and mists the plant for maybe two weeks mm -hmm. entonces estos son invernaderos grandes donde se este mantiene las plantas húmedas por dos semanas and finally you have your rooted cutting which then goes into the transplanting machine cuando ya están, ya han desarrollado este, las raíces, están listos para pasar en esa máquina para hacer el trasplante. Um, I don't have a machine like this, but uh, I, pl I transplant my plants by myself. <laughs> <laughs> However, my friend has a very nice machine. <laughs> Entonces, nos está enseñando cómo se hace en empresas más grandes que la de ella. Ella lo tiene que realizar a mano. I guess sometimes they also transplant, but um, yeah, it's, I'm just gonna. And here you have your finished bench. I wanted to show you these slides just so you can see how many thousands of cuttings are going through the system and why it's important for plant breeders to try and have control over their varieties. Entonces nos quiso enseñar estas eh, transparencias para que ustedes vean los miles de plantas que se producen y lo fácil que es que por ahí se pierda alguna. Oops. This is my upside down slide, sorry. Google Google Drive. <laughs> so I, I wanted to show off and just show you some of my clients that I work with in North America and around the world. Um, I don't know for if you know these people, but Canada is a small country for intellectual property for plants. Only the big marketing companies file for protection in Canada, only the big multinational companies. So my clients uh, work worldwide in intellectual property for plants. Entonces, so los principales demandantes de los derechos de obtentor son compañías multinacionales. Nosotros podemos reconocer, ahí están los nombres. Dice que en Canadá hay pocas de estas eh, compañías. This is my upside down greenhouse. <laughs> Está haciendo bromas de que su transparencia salió al revés porque tuvo que eh, bajarla a través de Google. Again, this is a repeat slide. I just want to remind you what my job is. So mostly, oops, mostly my job is administrative, to do the applications, to write letters to the government, to write letters to my clients, manage their lists and lists of Excel over and over. Um, my company, I've been in business for 18 years. I have registered well over 2,000 uh, new varieties of plants. Entonces, aquí está mostrando que el, su trabajo fundamental, eh, nueve de los doce meses se dedica a hacer trabajo administrativo, llenar todas las, este, las aplicaciones, asesorar a sus clientes, mandar este, eh, <laughs> eh, cartas, etc. <laughs> Y en sus 18 años eh, como en su compañía ha registrado más de 2.500 nuevas variedades. These are the certificates the government gives for plants. Eso son, es un ejemplo de los certificados de obtentor que otorga el gobierno. I don't know, I just want to show you that it costs money. Gracias. That's all. So, the process is voluntary. As a plant breeder, you can choose to spend money or not spend money. If you don't file for plant breeder's rights, you can still sell your variety. The people who file are trying to be sure that nobody steals their plants. Entonces, so eso es para demostrar que registrar una variedad cuesta dinero, pero eso no significa que ustedes no pueden producirla. Si, si la pueden producir sin registrarla, pero tienen el riesgo de que se las puedan robar. Um, so my main job is testing. So in Canada, there is an allowance. Uh, part of the plant breeder's rights process is to prove that your variety is distinct, uniform, and stable. Those are the three criteria that I have to test every plant for plant breeder's rights. Entonces, para poder registrar una nueva variedad, hay este, eh, Agricultores como ella que tienen que conducir este, eh, ensayos en campo para demostrar que la variedad es distinta, uniforme y estable. Lo que vemos como 
D-U-S. D-U-S, yeah. D-U-S. <laughs> I can speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's really four criteria. We talked, new is the idea that it cannot be sold and sold for a, a little bit of time. But the distinct, uniform, and stable, that's my next slides are going to be talking about that. Entonces, en realidad son cuatro criterios porque obviamente tiene que ser nueva. Entonces, pero ella se va a concentrar en la parte de este, los, los este, ensayos que se hacen para demostrar que es distinta, uniforme y estable. One more long slide. The idea of DUS testing is different in different countries. For Canada, we have decided to do a testing system where the third party, a breeder can choose who can do the testing in Canada. So I am a unique person maybe because I'm not a government, but I do all the testing for the government. In Europe, all of the testing is done by the state. All of the government tr does all the trials, um, and there are no uh, third-party testing. And in the United States, everything is done by a database and by paper. So there's many ways of doing DUS testing. Entonces, eh, dice que en, en el caso de Canadá, eh, existe la capacidad de que una tercera persona haga todos los ensayos. Eh, entonces, eh, está el gobierno, está el mejorador y en este caso ella que hace los, este, los experimentos. En el caso de Europa, el gobierno es quien conduce estos experimentos y en el caso de Estados Unidos dice que no se realizan en el campo, solamente se hace todo el análisis este, en papel. As well, um, for Canada and every other country, many countries, instead of doing the test, I buy the report from Europe. So I have two techniques for finishing my applications. I can do the trial in Canada, or I can buy a report for 240 euros. But. Entonces, tiene dos estrategias para el caso de los ensayos en campo. A veces los lleva a cabo ella personalmente, u otras veces solamente utiliza lo que ya se hizo en Europa para meterlo en la aplicación. We do hundreds of species in horticulture. There's so many flowers. So we have tested over the years hundreds of different genera of flowers. Entonces, su trabaja fundamentalmente en este en especies de flores y ahí pueden ver ustedes todos los géneros de las diferentes especies que trabaja. Más de 100 distintas especies. So every year I have to learn something new, which is nice. So um, this is my little greenhouse. I have 10,000 square feet, not so much. So in, um, I'm just going to just push. Oh. Entonces, este es su pequeño invernadero. Tiene 10,000 metros, pies, pies cúbicos, pies cuadrados <laughs> de superficie. I don't know where my slide is for this, but under, I have a lot of rules I have to follow for my trials. I have to have always 20 plants that are healthy on the bench. I have to have everything labeled. So you can see, um, I don't have a slide, but one of the weird parts of plant breeders' rights is the name that we use to register the variety. It's not a fancy, it's a, it's a code. Usually, these are Syngenta varieties. Fis Rix Pinka Manzo 0003. <laughs> I, my mind is crazy with codes. But we also, th so the companies, they use codes so that, and the same code has to be used all over the world. So the, the code is registered the same in every country. Entonces dice que este, ella tiene que tener etiquetados todos sus materiales y que es este bastante aburrido que los nombres de las variedades no son bonitos, sino como ustedes ven son claves que da la compañía que las quiere registrar. So you can see I also do garden moms and deer villa plants, everything. It's not so tidy, hey? Um, I'm going to spend a little time on just the idea of distinctness. This is um, the most important part for having your plant protected is to be sure it's different. Mm -hmm. So one of the requirements in my greenhouse is not only do I have a good 
I have a lots of good references. So my job, the client, the breeder, they send me their new plant, and then I have to bring in many reference varieties and prove to the government of Canada that the new variety is different from all the references. I do that with test guidelines. The Canadian government gives me many test guidelines. The guidelines have standardized traits that I have to finish or answer. And the traits are generally all the above. They have qualitative traits, quantitative traits, and a bit of both. So we are measuring sometimes with a ruler or using our eyes. Entonces, eh, eh, en este caso está enfatizando la parte de ser distinto, que es la parte fundamental para poder registrar una nueva variedad. Entonces, para poder hacerlo, ella necesita variedades de referencia que tiene que conseguir para demostrarle al gobierno canadiense que las nuevas variedades que quieren registrarse son diferentes. Eh, la, el gobierno canadiense le da una, le una lista de vari eh, variables que ella tiene que tomar en las plantas, algunas de ellas son cualitativas, otras son cuantitativas, a veces tiene que estar midiendo, otras veces lo determina a, este, a simple vista. So, now you can see how easy my job is. <laughs> these are, we have to do a lot of photographic evidence for the government, so these are all photographs that I've submitted to the government. So, for example, these are this would be the candidate with a reference. You can, s the most difficult crop always is a white variety because there's no color to see the difference. Here, this is what we call a qualitative trait. Whether the flower has an eye or no, no eye. And also the um, quantitative, well not really quantitative. <laughs> I, don't, I should probably be qualitative the arrangement of lobes, so whether the petal is free or whether the, the lobes are overlapping. This is how I spend my life looking so cl closely at flowers to define whether they, the lobes are touching or not touching. Bueno, su, fundamentalmente su trabajo en esta parte de diferencias visuales es la toma fotografías, estas fotografías las manda el gobierno canadiense, en el del lado izquierdo tienen ustedes la, variable, la variedad candidato a ser registrada, del lado derecho está la, el, la variedad de referencia, dice que las eh, flores blancas son las más difíciles de caracterizar porque no pueden hacerse énfasis en los diferentes colores pero este, ahí tienen dos ejemplos abajo en donde se, está la presencia de ojo o, o la ausencia y la este, localización de los pétalos, si están este, eh, más abiertos a la base o no. Entonces es como ella eh, usa su tiempo viendo estas eh, pequeñas diferencias. So, often for horticultural crops, the difference is flower color, Oops. Entonces, en algunos casos, como en este, la diferencia de color es la que permite ver que son, eh, un, es una variedad distinta. Um, however, on petunias, this is a petunia, I think you know. Um, petunias, one of the interesting characters is the length of the sepal. So I measure this sepal for both of them. I measure the length and the width on 20 plants. Really, I, sometimes I don't do it. I have students who help me, but... <laughs> <laughs> but we also we would measure just so you know how crazy I measure the width and I measure the length of the corolla tube it's fun Entonces en el caso de petunias eh, las de las características que permiten distinguir las variedades es la longitud de los sépalos eh, eh, lo, su anchura y entonces igual de en el caso de la este, la longitud de la corolla and you can see the codes, PIC RETA, US TUNI 47601. This uh, US TUNI is a proven winners. Do you know proven winners in Mexico? No? And we also do a lot of hydrangea are so big in Canada. We do many hydrangea. This is um, hydrangea macrophylla. These are spring meadow varieties. And again, just an example of um, the color main color on the sepal, so you can see this is a bit darker, and um, we're also looking at the color of the fertile flowers in the center. Hydrangeas are weird because the 
the flower, the part that looks pretty are the, are the sterile part, and the, the insignificant middle, the insignificant parts are the girl parts. And again, always this degree of overlapping is an interesting character for distinctness. Okay. ¿Qué, qué especie es esta, José? Hydrangea. Hortensia. Okay. Bueno, eh, dice que en el caso de la hortensia también tiene que ver los di, eh, las diferencias en colores eh, y que las flores este, estériles son las que tienen el color más fuerte. ¿Entendí bien? ¿José? ¿Ah? En el caso de las flores estériles. Okay. More petunias. I'm just going to keep going. I don't mm -hmm. know what time it is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go. Uh, uniformity is a little more complicated. So for, just go back. Distinctness is um, very rarely will a variety fail because of distinctness. Usually, unless it's um, very, very similar, we can find something different. Sometimes even one millimeter on a on a petal can be enough of a difference, just one millimeter. Wow. Yeah. Dice que en el caso de la, de la diferencia, con una, sola, una diferencia de un milímetro en la longitud, ya puede considerarse una nueva variedad. But you have to show it using statistics. Pero tienen que demostrarlo haciendo est eh, análisis estadísticos. That de, de es es dif estadísticamente diferente. The more difficult uh, every year I have my varieties fail because of uniformity. Uniformity is the more difficult criteria. And um, so if you know what off type is, in my trials I'm allowed to have one off type because I only have 20 plants. Entonces la, la característica más difícil de probar es la uniformidad. Eh, en el caso de ella, que su tamaño de muestra son 20 plantas, solamente puede tener una que sea diferente, entonces varias de sus variedades no han podido ser registradas porque no cumplen con este criterio. It's interesting because it's about variation and unfortunately for plant varieties we, we want to have very little variation, don't worry. So here you can see uh, one trial that failed because we had the the variegation disappears and you lose the variegation and you have just solid yellow. Este es un ejemplo de una variedad que no pasó el, el examen porque perdió la variegación de las hojas. Como puedes, pueden ver, la planta de en medio este, tiene mayor superficie de color uniforme, por eso no fue registrada. Sometimes uh, there's rules to allow some types of variation because, um, or at least you can make an argument to the government that the variation is because of the environment or where the plant was on the bench or the amount of sunlight. Um, so you can, have, you can have variation in the trial, but you have to be able to explain why. This. I can show you the picture. So this is actually one variety and you have all these different flower types on the one variety. Um, and this variety did pass, but you have to be able to show all, I'll show you, I'll, let me just, uh, so again, one variety, it passed because the variation is caused by differences in temperature and light. It's not a genetic base. Yes. Para un, que una variedad sea nueva, debe de ser genéticamente homogénea, pero como saben, la interacción de las plantas con el ambiente puede eh, hacer que haya diferentes expresiones. Esta, ustedes pueden ver las diferencias, sin embargo fue aceptada como una variedad uniforme, porque Brenda fue capaz de demostrar que las variaciones que vemos ahí se, deberían, se debían perdón, a las diferencias en luz y temperatura, no son diferencias genéticas. Again, it's the same, same idea, um, maybe a bit different. This one, we can have variation in the plant if each plant has the same variation. So I'll show you a picture now, but we can have differences and variation in our varieties, but all 20 plants must have the same differences within the one plant. It's hard to explain. Don't, yeah. Bueno, este, pueden tener variación eh, dentro de una variedad que se registre, pero cada planta dentro de sí misma debe tener el mismo grado de variación. Por ejemplo, esta es una verbena, y 
on, the, on each plant. So all 20 plants have flowers that look like these five types of flowers. I have to, it's very difficult when you have uniformity problems because you have to look at each plant so carefully for each different type of flower. But it's, it's possible. Este es un ejemplo en verbena, yes. en donde ustedes pueden observar toda esa, deben de ver esa misma variación en sus 20 plantas que es su tamaño de, de muestra. But sometimes one flower will go white. <laughs> <laughs> Then it fails. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of my uniformity idea. So in the greenhouse, most often I spend my time worrying about uniformity. It's the most difficult um, requirement to meet. Con una sola flor que no este, llene los este, estándares, con eso ya no registran la, la variedad. Entonces, esta es la característica que más eh, le cuesta demostrar. Finally, uh, the third requirement for plant producer rights is that the variety is stable. But the truth is, we don't do anything to test stability. We just pretend if it looks uniform and distinct, it must be stable. <laughs> There is a rule um, after the variety is granted rights. If the variety on the marketplace is shown to be very unstable, there are rules to have the rights revoked. But it's an easy, this is the easy part. Entonces, en teoría debería demostrar que la variedad también es estable, pero no hace ensayos para hacerlo. Ella asume que si es uniforme y es diferente, debe de ser estable. Pero sí hay eh, reglas para ver este, qué tanta variación a través del tiempo se puede permitir. Um, so, once I finish all of the work, the Canadian government, the process they follow is to publish everything online. The Canadian government has a website, you can see all my descriptions. Um, this is only a snapshot, but all of the work that I do gets published for um, everyone to see. The idea is that if you don't like my work, you can make a complaint and possibly stop my application from going forward. Entonces, este es un ejemplo de ya del reporte final cuando el gobierno de Canadá ha decidido otorgar el este el certificado de obtentor. Ese se publica en el en el sitio web del gobierno canadiense, donde todo mundo puede este eh, verlo y si hay objeciones pueden este hacerlas. Okay, this is my last slide. Sorry. Ah. Well. Anyway, it's good luck, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, goodbye, slideshow. <laughs> Dice que tiene suerte porque esa era su última transparencia. Perfect. <laughs> my last slide was uh, gracias for listening to my talk. I am proud to present my company to you today, and thank you for listening so carefully. Su última transparencia era para darle las gracias por atenderla con tanto este, atención y para de, de agradecer la oportunidad de presentar el trabajo que ella hace en su compañía Bioflora.